Today, I want to take a look at something I've been fairly hesitant to try out, and there's multiple reasons for that, not the least of which is that I can't actually use it right now. Uh, this is a step up, step down transformer, and specifically it's a 4000 watt model, which is, um, I can only describe as a lie, because I don't know how you'd get 4000 watts of single phase power, but let's just ignore that for right now. Uh, this is a single transformer inside that allows you to convert between 240 and 120 volts AC, and this is bi-directional. You can convert it either way. Now, the fundamental theory for how that works is pretty simple, except the only way that I was formerly familiar with uh, is not how this works. And when I tried to open this so I could research, you know, how to replace that connector, I was only left with more questions, and then after... Looking it up, um, uh, well, let's just say I'm glad I did, and if you're considering buying something like this, you probably want to be aware of these things. So today we're going to take a look at replacing that cable, because I have to do that, and if you buy one of these, even in the US, you are going to have to do that as well, because they just ship with that for some reason. Um, but not only that, but look at a schematic of how this thing functions, uh, what the implications are of how it works, and some things that you need to consider when using it. Alright, let's start to take a look at the front of this thing before we open it up. So, we have a power switch here, which is actually a breaker. It's really hard to flip up, and then super easy to push down. I'm not really thrilled that it's a breaker, because those contacts aren't meant to be flipped all the time. Uh, so I'm going to be using a power strip on one of the outlets with a switch so I can turn stuff on and off. Um, so that's kind of annoying. But that power strip will be plugged into one of the four outlets on here. Now, these outlets are a little weird and annoying. Um, they have three different kinds of outlets. For one, um, all of them are almost compatible with each other, except... That's the one that I really need uh, that's motivating me to start this today. Um, and we'll see about that as we uh, get further along in this. But it's just weird that they're all different. And I don't understand why, because that one there should be compatible with everything that these can do. So who knows? Uh, but you'll see that they're all labeled AC110V or 220V. That's because this thing can be switched between stepping down or stepping up, and it could be either of those, depending on how you have it configured. So, yes, it can technically be both, which means that the labels are kind of useless, so that's a little annoying, but we'll just go ahead and not worry about that. It doesn't ever pass the full mains power from the wall directly through to any of these, uh, at least I'm pretty sure. I'll double check that when we're inside. So don't take that as meaning that one of these is just a straight through power connection. All right, and then on the back, we don't have much. We just have a big warning telling us that we need to adjust this switch, which will go between 220 and 110. I'm going to leave it on 110 since that's what I will be using. Well, 120, but again, it, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, 110, 120, and 220, and 240 are basically the same. Just power has gone up a little bit over the years. Um, we have that, and then we have a fuse, which uh, hopefully isn't blown. It looks good. That is a big chunky fuse so that thing is uh ooh, wow that's gonna take a lot of power to pop uh and then we have the power cable input that i will be replacing i kind of wish this hole was big enough to put a big iec 13 connector but i kind of also need it to be directly wired as we'll see um so it's probably for the better that i can't do that now let's go ahead and uh get this thing open Okay, I've removed all of the uh, screws here. There's 10 screws, five on each side. And with that, we can just lift or slide the top out of the way and see that gargantuan transformer. This thing is very impressive in person. It's kind of weird because it feels like an immovable object. It's like there, you can press it, and it just doesn't go anywhere. It is so heavy and dense. Uh, so that's amusing in and of itself, but... Um, it really confused me once I started looking at it more because uh, it is an example of something I've never previously encountered. Now, this device will either take 240, cut it in half, and output 120, or take in 120, 
double it and output 240, which made me think that this would be a 2 to 1 transformer. And by that, I mean it would have two windings where one is twice as long as the other. But it doesn't. <laughs> this transformer has three wires connected to it. I had never seen that before, and just finding out that this even existed is what prompted me to decide to make a video on That just broke off of the fuse. Well, it's a good thing I was planning on uh, <laughs> looking at all the wires anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what prompted me to uh, do this video, because this is called an auto transformer, and it does regulate down the voltage, but not in the way that I expected it to. Now, I'll get into the exact schematic of how a three-terminal auto transformer works in a moment, but just leading up to this, I want you to experience how confused I was believing that this would be a traditional isolated transformer, because if we measure the input power coming from the wall, uh, we can see that it's actually connected to both terminals going into it, which is very strange. Now, the terminal coming out of the transformer right here that goes off and down to one of the two sides of the input here loops over to the other side here, comes down to one of the input sides there, loops up to one of the inputs here, which then connects back to the main power. So not only is it connected, it's a complete loop, which feels kind of strange. So what is going on here is uh, an interesting way of doing this um, <laughs> that you kind of really have to pay attention to when wiring everything up, but it does actually work. And understanding this is, uh, it, it felt critical to me since I have to replace this cable and know where everything's going. This is the input voltage selection switch. It's currently set to 110. I can move it over to 120, but you won't see anything on the back. The way that it'll work is by bridging either this side of conductors or this side of conductors. And if we look at that, um, there, the conductors themselves are bridged between that side, there's two loops going over there. The only difference is that they're flipped. And this is uh, kind of weird when you're expecting this to be an isolated transformer because you're effectively just, just choosing between being shorted on this side or being shorted on this side. And the only apparent change is that you're reversing the polarity with this crossover right here. So this was another thing that clued me into the fact that this is uh, not what I was expecting. So now let's go ahead and see how this schematic works because <laughs> this was a real head scratcher. Now, if this had been a typical isolation transformer like I thought it was, it might have been made something like this. A normal secondary winding and a primary winding twice as long with a tap at one quarter its length. If we put 240 volts into the primary side, we'll get 120 volts on the secondary because it would be working in a 2 to 1 ratio that steps down the voltage. The generated voltage on the other side is transferred magnetically through the metal core, not as an electrical current. This means that if you passed earth ground straight through to an outlet on the other side, there is no complete path to conduct current to ground. This is where the isolation comes from and makes this type of transformer very safe for handling mains power. Now, if we change the winding on our primary side to the one quarter winding point and give it 120 volts, we'll get 240 volts on the secondary side. This is stepping up the voltage now with a one to two ratio. If we put a switch to change the connection of the mains input of the primary to these two tap points, we have a theoretical version of the converter I have, if it used an isolation transformer. This is how I thought it would work going into this, but there was another property of transformers that I hadn't considered that explains how this one works. If we have this model switched to step up, we get 240 volts on the secondary, but we actually have two secondaries because the unused section of the primary will also interact with the magnetic field. If we measure the ends of that section, we will see 360 volts because it's three times longer than the part receiving mains. But since it's part of the same coil as the mains input, we can actually measure the total length and get 480 volts. 
if we move the quarter tap to the halfway point, we can get that to be 240 because it becomes a 1 to 2 ratio instead. The opposite will also be true, and if we put 240 volts at the ends of the primary, we'll get 120 volts at the center. From here, we can just drop the secondary altogether and generate all of the voltages we want with just one side. And this is how an auto transformer works. It's simpler and cheaper to make one of these because it only needs one winding, but we have lost the isolation aspect of the transformer. As long as everything is wired correctly, this shouldn't be a problem. But while researching this, I came across someone else with one of these, which I'll link below, who through no fault of their own, unwittingly changed the polarity of their input, which sent their 240 volts main to a 120 volts power strip, blowing up a varistor that was just trying to deflect a surge that never ended. This shouldn't be possible for me since I want to step up to 240, but this kind of thing will be on my mind now. Now, this is all just theory and schematics, so let's get back to the real thing and try to confirm that this is how the unit I have works. Now, even though everything's kind of electrically all connected in here, I can actually visually confirm the change in the length of the coil that's going to the outlets by measuring the resistance of the connected side. When it is at the 110 input setting on the switch, I'm getting about 400 milliohms. But when I switch it over to the 240 input, I can get about 200 milliohms, which is the two to one ratio that I would expect to see. Now that we've measured that change in resistance based on the position of the switch back here, we know for certainty that this crossed over section here is changing the position between the center tap and the outside edge of the coil, which means that we know how this is switching between step up or step down. It's just always really nice to see theory in practice like this and helps give a better feel for how this is functioning. Now I just need to go through and replace that cable uh, so that I can actually use this in North America, because again, I still haven't actually been able to try this thing. But I do feel a lot more confident now that I understand how it works and that I shouldn't have any problems replacing that cable, so long as I make sure all of the wiring matches. What things did not go well from here, and I need to cover this differently than I thought I would while recording. At this point, I thought I was just going to go in here and mention double checking the polarity of the new mains cable as I soldered it, but literally the first thing I looked at in here had a problem with how it was assembled, and that just continued from there. In the end, over half of the soldered connections in this thing were absolute garbage, and if I hadn't opened it and looked so closely at it, there could have been a real risk of fire. Obviously, the first thing I found wrong was the live wire breaking off of the fuse housing. It had almost no solder on it, and the joint was extremely cold. Then, once I got further into it, I found the live wire going into the breaker was both tinned and crimped onto the insulation, meaning that it both couldn't compress and was making extremely poor contact. Then, I barely bumped the neutral wire and had it fall off while trying to finish removing the cable. At this point, I realized just how poorly this thing was made and decided to resolder every single point on it. And it was a good thing I did, because there were more problems. The hot wire coming off of the transformer wasn't tinned. One of the earth wires was so short it was actually taut and pulling two connectors together, which I just replaced outright. Then I had three wires that were each barely connected and either fell off when I bumped them or with just a slight wiggle. And after a little while, I gave up filming just so I could fix everything without being distracted with the camera, because... I really needed to heavily scrutinize everything in there. The wires not being tinned or connecting poorly are a huge risk in something like this. At 40 pounds, this thing obviously isn't going to be subject to movement fatigue or even vibrations, but it is a high power device and every marginal solder point in here is effectively a resistor that will heat up the more power you draw. And if that reaches a failure point, the loose wire could float around and cause arcing inside. This is, without a doubt, the worst built and most dangerous device I have ever seen. I bought this at a thrift store a while ago and never had a reason to try getting it working until now, so I am stuck with it. But there is absolutely no reason anyone out there should buy one of these. I just... no, it's horrible. <sighs> now, I don't want to dwell on this much more, because I could rant about this thing for far longer. 
but the rest of the video may be a bit disjointed because I was just angry after working on fixing all of these issues with this thing over multiple days. Um, but now I need to put the cable in. Um, so this is my new NEMA uh, US style power connector. And the fact that I know that that is a NEMA is not because I know what I'm talking about. It's because I've done way too much research on this thing. There we go. <sighs> All right, that'll... Since it crimps it in place, it can't be pulled through. That's another reason to use that. Uh, but now we got to figure out what the pinout's going to be. Oh, yeah, this thing's great. Uh, all right. I think if I do that, um, then I can just beep out which ones go where. Because ground will be ground now. Check. Uh, this, I believe, will go here. No, goes. Okay. Uh, so that would work. It was wired to that one, which is neutral. So it's fused on hot. Okay. So that, that's a good thing I didn't tin that, actually. So I will do this one. Um, but that does mean that I can grab the breaker and crimp this into it. And unlike whoever put this together, I'm going to go ahead and not crimp the insulation. There we are. This will get soldered to ground, which is pretty easy. Okay, that came out super solid. And do this one. Okay, there's that. Um, that, oh yeah, there's this side still. Ugh, last stupid wire that broke. I don't even know how you mess this up. This is like the easiest wire to solder ever. Oh, it's hot. That's a lot of thermal mass. I'll leave this back for a moment so it doesn't shrink too much. Okay, that's it. Uh, it should be all good. Okay, let me confirm pinouts here. Uh, no. Oh, it's the transformers removed. Duh. Ground. Good. 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 I think it's technically, yeah. Okay. Um... I guess that's it. Now to put the transformer back in. This thing is so heavy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I gotta get a scale in here just for that. It's ridiculous. Okay, here we go. Scale is at zero. All right. Let's pick this thing up. Oh. <sighs> really? That's 30 pounds? That's not 10. I absolutely measured that at 40 before. But yeah, okay. So 30 pound transformer. That thing is ridiculous. Oh, you know what? This is also medicine the metal shroud. I guess it's probably... Let's see. All right, so it all adds up. But dang, 30 pound transformer. That is hilarious. With how heavy and dense that transformer is, this took eight minutes to do, and it is hilarious because you don't put the transformer in the unit, you wrap the unit around the transformer. It is still a giant pile of garbage, so don't buy one. Okay, this is my final on-camera uh, test. Everything here is connected. Um, the transformer has been rewired in back here and in the front. Um, so I'm going to do one last check that uh, everything is working. The breaker is currently off, which means that we don't have a complete circuit because if we do, then it's shorted on both sides. So this will give me uh, a test of the uh, neutral side here. Okay, all good. Um, there we go. The live side is currently disabled. And if I turn this on, it becomes active. Good. 
turn this off and good. I can stick this in here, do that. And then you can see how that happens. Uh, ground is not shorting at all, but it connects to where it needs to. Okay. Um, yeah, that seems right. So I am going to go ahead and look over everything uh, one more time off camera and then I guess try plugging it in, which I'm not going to do to my uh, bench here because I don't actually know how this is wired. It was uh, hand wired by someone. They installed a custom breaker and everything. So I don't know that the neutral and uh, hot sides are actually active. Now I mentioned that I'm concerned about it being uh, powered connected to a surge protector. This is a surge protector uh, power strip, um, but this is a 240 uh, protector. So the article that I linked um, talks about how the 120 volt surge protector would see 240 constantly and then go into a short mode. This at best, or at worst I should say, should see um, uh, 120 short constant. So technically that's fine. It's not great, but uh, it wouldn't be an issue because the surge protector uh, wouldn't see that as a higher voltage than it should. So it should theoretically be fine. Even if the polarity is reversed, it's just uh, not fun. I don't like it. <laughs> so I don't like a lot about this, but uh, I think I'll be safe there since I'm stepping down. But yeah, I think that's it. Now we can try it. That was, that was a lot of problems to fix on this piece of junk. All right, let's try this stupid breaker power switch. Okay, I can hear the transformer. Yep. A big, loud transformer. Not, okay, not loud, just deep. Okay, the power strip I want to use. Let's try this. Okay, I see why the uh, regulations for these things are uh, more stringent in Europe. If it's just a really tiny plug, I mean, dang, it's so easy to touch that. Oh, really nice contacts on there, though. Uh, okay, this has its own power light. Okay. Good. Man, the light's dim, but this thing will dim, like, super easily. Uh, it works? Cool! Okay, I'm lying. This is not the first time I tested this. I actually took this outside and did all of this as well uh, because I super uh, don't trust this thing. But I can test and verify. We are getting 240 volts. That is excellent. Well, it's about 240 volts. Interestingly, that was 245 when I was outside. So I wonder if there's a greater load on this circuit. That's kind of strange. Uh, but that's close enough. So, I think it's time to actually test something real with this. Okay, so what I have here is the power supply to a TI-58C that I was sent. This came from the UK um, via Nathan. Thank you for that. Um, mail video is in works alongside this video at the same time, actually. Um, but the power supply came from the UK as well and is, uh, well, to 40 AC. So I couldn't use it, and this is what spurred on this whole project. So it's actually 240, it's 50 hertz. I don't think it's going to matter. Um, so it outputs uh, 6.2 volts AC when running. So if I plug this in, this is the first time, this is the real first time I'm doing this. Uh, I should be able to measure 6.2 volts AC coming out of this, and then if that's the case, I can try powering the calculator with it. Okay, nothing went horrifically awry there. Uh, measuring, that's really hard to measure, actually. Screw that, let's just plug it in. <laughs> I'm just going to hope it works, because the contacts are super close, and I don't know if I can safely do that with the uh, probe leads. Okay, uh, power switch is here. Doesn't do anything with power. Ah! Success! Excellent! Well, that proves it. It works. Oh, that's that's super cool. <laughs> uh, that's kind of it. Um, I don't have a lot of other stuff, really. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is really awesome. Um, I don't have a lot of other stuff. 
There we go. Uh, oh, it needs a little... The 8 there seemed uh, a, little, a little springy there. Eh, it might need cleaning. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff that needs 240 volts. Um, but this opens a lot of doors for me in the future now. Uh, so I can get stuff like that if I want. All the segments are lighting up. Oh, this is the first time I'm seeing this calculator on, so I'm a little uh, transfixed here. Um, but now I can, yeah, now I can go do some stuff, uh, get some more exciting things, and uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy. That's cool. Now, again, uh, this is not a 60 hertz um, re-signal generator. I'm not sure what the term for that would be. Uh, but this is passing through 60 hertz, 240 volts AC single phase, and it can't do anything else. That's all this does. But it's working well here. Now, would I recommend one of these? Absolutely not. The inside of this thing was horrible, and nobody should have to go through and repair this thing as much as I just had to. So, no, I don't recommend one of these. That was, this is just a piece of garbage. Um... Hopefully, you can find a similar type of device um, that also will do this job, but just don't buy one of these. And this is a very generic type model. I'm pretty sure there are other brand names selling the same thing. So just avoid anything that looks like this. Um, just know the production quality of this thing was horrible and terrifying. But uh, that's it. I don't have anything else to test with it. It works. It outputs 240. We saw that. It worked with a 240 device. So... It checks all the boxes for a uh, successful repair. Well, yeah, it was a repair after I broke it at least, um, but it was gonna break itself. So let's say a successful project. I hope you enjoyed this look at, I'm not really sure how this video is gonna go together because I really thought I was just gonna be replacing this power cable, but this ended up being a whole other ordeal. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at whatever this is. Um, <laughs> if you wanna support the channel, I am on Patreon, but for now, that's it and I'm going to go finish recording a video on calculators. I'll see you next time.